Arctic air, usually contained up north in the Earth's jet stream, dipped down into the U.S. It's called a polar vortex. Down in Houston, and look at this neighborhood, still in darkness. It's four below, the air temp is 11 at Dallas Baptist, it's snowing. It's a storm by which future winter storms in Texas will be judged against. The entire state is under a winter storm warning. Temperatures dipped dangerously low. I'm an old guy. I don't know that I've seen this before. The entire state feels like zero. That in February of 2021, we got caught off guard. The whole entire state had came to a standstill with this freeze. Let's face it, Texas wasn't built for this kind of cold. Pipes burst blackouts, extreme cold, supplies being unavailable. So my family vowed to never let ourselves get caught like this ever again. Uh, today, uh, I am going to go and get some supplies because I just heard that there's a strong possibility that we might have some inclement weather come in in the next two weeks over here in DFW area. Uh, it's a strong possibility it might be a resurgence of the freeze of 2021. So I'm gonna go out and get some essentials today and uh, come along for the ride. got here to Dollar Journal to pick up my first uh, of many supplies that I'm gonna pick up today. Uh, they have these awesome little pop-up lights that puts out a bunch of light and it's only like 10 bucks. I'm gonna go grab a couple of those. I have some already, but you know, uh, more is uh, better. I just got here to Walmart, second uh, place on the stop and shop for supplies. And right now what I'm looking for is some water. Uh, just gotta make sure I always gotta have potable water, potable water, however you say that. Um, I'm gonna pick up a couple of pair of thermal underwear for the kids, just in case. Uh, then I wanna look for some starter logs and uh, whatever else I find while inside. All right, about $325 later, I got just about everything I need. And some straw for my vegetables and my chickens and possibly a new heat lamp because I think my heat lamp is gone out that I put in with the chicks and then one definitely for my indoor uh, gardening operation because it's uh, not well insulated in there. So it gets kind of cold. So I definitely want to put a heat lamp as opposed to trying to put like something like a um, electric heater out there because I don't it's it's far away from my home and or the main house and I don't want to create a situation where I could possibly uh, set a fire because it's not being mine. All right so what I'm doing right now is I'm heading out to my local feed store. Um, you know I love this place. Uh, they're, they're a local feed store. Uh, I patron patron I, uh, I shop there all the time and uh, this is where I get my uh, chicken feed from we also get my dog food and then uh, you know incidentals like uh, water and containers for the chickens uh, heat lamps accessories etc so here we are we just got to stay country feed uh, this is my local feed store um, I love that little business uh, they're really helpful and very knowledgeable there again if you can support your local businesses um, uh, I think that's always a good thing Next, I need to go get some propane. And then secondly, I need to go get some gas for my generator. Next, I need to back to the Ponderosa. 
Let's see what we got. Whoa. All right, let's see. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff. Uh, all in all, I spent about $400 today with the propane, the gasoline, uh, and then all of the accoutrement um that i purchased to uh make sure we're good for this winter um but you know what i'd rather spend four hundred dollars now instead of a couple of thousand trying to scrounge around for supplies if i need them you know i'm i'm, I'm one of those people that I fully believe better to have it and not need it or need it and don't have it or something like that i don't know so hey there you go <laughs> In case you're wondering what I actually picked up from Walmart, uh, yes, I did stray away from my list. But the stuff that I found, I think, is actually going to be very useful. Uh, one, I needed an extra faucet cover for my outdoor faucets. Um, Stormy, I love her to death, but uh, she tore up the last one I had in my back faucet, so I picked up another one of those. I think I got this for like $1.67. I'm pretty sure you can probably find them cheaper, but I just happened to see it while I was there, so I said, what else? Uh, also, in case it gets too cold uh, for hot cocoa for the kids, I picked up two thermos, a uh, purple one for my son and a pink one for my daughter. Um, because when the freeze of 2021 happened and we were trying our hardest to stay warm, um, you know, my kids, they never realized that we were in like a, a serious situation because my wife and I, we are very talented in the fact of, we made a game out of it for them. We popped open a tent and we um, we put our tent in the living room where our fireplace is. And for them, it was just a big camp out. You know, we were camping indoors. They had a blast. Uh, so doing things like hot cocoa and the thermos um, will keep their mind at ease and it'll keep them from being traumatized. Or at least that's our logic. We're no professional parents and we're learning every day. But uh, we figure that that helps them through the ordeal uh, because they're excited the fact that snow may be coming to Texas yet again. <laughs> also, <clears throat> picked up some uh, Coleman uh, propane cans. It was a sweet deal. It was two canisters for nine ninety seven, I believe what it was. Um, and these are these are great. Um, when I'm trying to start a fire outdoors uh, in my fire pit, uh, in my several fire pits, because I have multiple fire pits. Uh, these are great little canisters with a little torch on the top. Boom, you can just start that fire right up quick, fast, and hurry. $9.97, uh, that's an awesome deal. Uh, side note, Coleman is not sponsoring this video. I have no sponsors. Uh, I just, I like their, their little propane canisters. Also, you saw me shopping around. Well, I picked up these little buttes. Uh, they were like 10, excuse me, no, eight bucks, like 8.88 or something crazy like that uh, for these little three gallon uh, containers of water. Uh, I'm going to, one, I bought water, but then I'm also going to fill these bad boys up and kind of keep them in our gym area uh, just in case we get in a situation where uh, potential pipes might freeze, we lose power, etc. I can cut off the main water line and uh, still have potable water for everybody to drink. Uh, good rule of thumb, now don't quote me on this, but I think it's that one person needs at least a gallon of water a day. Uh, so I should have more than enough water for at least a couple days uh, if it comes to that. I don't think it's going to be that extreme, but again, I would rather have it, not need it, instead of need it and don't have it. You know what I mean? So hey, next thing I got was this Enviro Log uh, six uh, fire starters. The reason why I picked those up is because uh, I am not naked, nor am I afraid. So I'm not sitting there struggling, uh, trying to light a fire with a fire starter. Uh, we ain't playing no games, you know. When you're cold, you know, you can't think straight. So uh, it's easier just to pop one of these bad boys into my fire. But I take it a step further. Since it's only six logs, in the fire uh, in the in the pack for about 18 bucks what i do is i chop each log up into sections of three so instead of six six three now i have 18 fires that i could potentially start now i already have some but again if this is a situation where i'm lighting multiple fires throughout the day etc cetera, etc cetera, 
I want to be able to have enough just to get us over that hill, so to speak. All right, here we go. So we got our hay and we got all of our gasoline. And you know what's funny? I'm sitting here thinking about this. This is a perfect fireball. Um, I'm glad I didn't catch fire on the way back. <laughs> you got dried hay, you got propane, you got all these miniature cans of gasoline plus my automotive mechanic stuff from uh, my side business as a, an automotive mechanic. But yeah, this is a perfect, uh, perfect explosion waiting to happen. So let's get this off the truck, shall we? So I'm gonna take my hay bales and I'm gonna store them in my garage, uh, just to keep them out of the elements. Uh, one, until I have an opportunity to go out and clean my chicken coop. Uh, yeah, in case you didn't know, chickens poo on everything. Don't get it twisted, everything. Um, so I gotta clean out the chicken coop. Uh, Ike and Ike Eds, they would appreciate some new, uh, some new hay put down in their chicken coop. Uh, second, um, after I finish the chicken coop, I'll probably go and uh, actually start adding the hay to my uh, to my garden to help again winterize the plants. But while I have it here, notice that back there, that Dutchman Sport. So wife wanted to buy that a couple of years ago, so we picked it up for a really good deal, uh, like really good deal. Um, but if you don't have an RV, this is something you may not realize, or if you're thinking about purchasing one, one thing to think about is this right here. So this is actually the uh, hot water heater unit for the RV. Now, of course, if things really get bad in the main house and uh, the fireplace and, and all of the goodies that I bought is not enough to maintain the heat that my wife wants, and I do say my wife because she's always cold, <laughs> um, we can always come out here to the RV as a backup. It's a propane uh, run furnace. Uh, and it also does have a hot water heater for your hot showers and you're washing your hot dishes, uh, warm dishes or what have you. Um, but something to take into consideration is that when you're winterizing and you're not planning on using your RV, you're not planning on going out and everything, um, you need to drain the water out of your hot water heater. Reason being is because you don't want that standing water just sitting in that hot water heater or inside your pipes uh, because it could lead to a burst situation. And then of course, you wouldn't find that out until after the freeze is over or you're planning to go camping and you got all this mold and you're wondering where all this water is coming from. So I've already drained my unit, um, but it's just always a good rule of thumb to make sure that you uh, drain that out uh, if you're not gonna be using it, especially if you got some colder months uh, ahead of you. Another one of the preps I want to talk about. This is a jump box. Jump box is uh, great when your uh, this cold weather comes in and you get a situation where um, the car won't start. So this is a Schumacher jump box that I use in my automotive business. Um, a lot of times people call me when they need like a jump on their vehicle or something of that nature. But I'm not really uh, going to be taking customers uh, during the freeze, if it happens. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and charge up my jump box just in case I need to, uh, if my battery dies down for whatever reason, or my wife's car, or any of the vehicles I have on the, uh, on the uh, compound. I want to make sure that I have a backup battery system just in case I need to jump something. I mean, I guess I could use my generator, but I mean, if I already got a jump box, it's easily totable, totable, easily portable, 
why not use it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and start charging it up. All right, so some of the other things that I picked up is I picked up pairs of gloves for my kids because of course I know that they're gonna wanna go outside and play in the snow. Um, and then I also picked them up uh, a couple of pairs of thermal underwears just to make sure that they're nice and toasty. That being said, I also picked up a pair for my wife to keep her nice and warm because uh, my wife don't like the cold. And then of course, with the holidays coming, I picked up some batteries. I don't know about you guys, but I go through batteries like it's not even, my God, like crazy. Um, now, another thing I picked up is, uh, and these were 10 bucks, but I picked up two more portable chargers. We have at least three or four in the household, um, but those um, portable chargers are a game changer. Uh, this one has two charges in it, so it can charge phones and tablets. And I don't know if your kids are anything like mine, but they, I know, bad parent, but they live on those tablets. Um, now, granted, you know, if the internet or excuse me, if the power does go off, yeah, they might not have, um, might not have access to the internet, but, you know, we can store up some movies on Netflix form or some little shows that they like, uh, and that becomes a fun activity, having them pick which shows they want to add to, uh, their next Netflix, um, uh, Netflix, Netflix queue. So, if it's, a uh, grid shutdown type of situation where, you know, the grid is locked out and everybody's going through blackouts. Yeah, I have the generator to uh, keep the essentials going, like my refrigerator and what have you. Uh, but these little portable chargers will definitely come in handy when keeping your, uh, your little devices charged.